Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Levan Talitvoy. I, I go by Levi, and uh, my colleague here, friend and colleague, is Kirk Hawkins over here. Hi. And we are here to talk about our book, uh, The Com Contemporary U.S. Populism in, com in a Comparative Perspective. Yeah. Levi, so, do we, yeah, do we want to talk a little bit more about maybe some consequences? Of yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask you, so why does it all matter? Why, why do we care about populism so much? Yeah, because in some ways you'd say, well, you just told me that, you know, all of the usual stuff we look at in a vote choice model, if we think about people's uh, political behavior, that's all still so important. And this is, this is just a secondary consideration on the, on the demand side of the voters. So, well, in that case, you know, why should we look at it on the supply side of the, pop, of the, the politicians? What we found is actually it matters a lot. And, um, it, and I'll hedge this already by saying where it doesn't matter is in, in precisely the place where a lot of scholars, especially economists for years, as they look at populism, they think of populism, they actually they limit it to people, politicians uh, promoting these short-sighted macroeconomic policies uh, with, with dire outcomes in the long term. And uh, what we found uh, in elsewhere as we've looked at this is that economic consequences are not really very consistent. I mean, not surprisingly, the right populists are not going to do as much damage to the economy as a left populist. But, but where, the, the, uh, where the consequences are, are consistent is the impact of populism on democratic institutions, liberal democratic institutions. So uh, things like, you know, the quality of elections or in particular what we, we looked at in, in here, I think we, we just took first a, a kind of a general measure of, I don't know if it was from quality or uh, freedom. Both, actually. We, we looked at both. So we looked at Freedom House and quality as well. And and there seems to be a, a significant relationship if we mix, uh, um, I guess we, don't, we didn't have U.S. data yet. I mean, a populist just got elected. So we compared uh, the level of populism in the U.S. to all the other countries. So in the figure, there's a gray line of where Donald Trump is, and we're waiting for the result of what this means for, 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 uh, for the United States. But if you look at the other countries, then, uh, then we see that there's definitely a negative relationship. More populism, the, the worse the democratic institutions. We looked at... We looked at executive constraint, which is an important uh, um, liberal democratic uh, uh, institution, which is that the, the executive cannot do what they want, and uh, and uh, there are checks and balances. So, uh, so we looked at that, and um, and we looked at freedom of the press. That's right. And in all these cases, we found really significant negative impacts. Um, and uh, there wasn't a real break here. So it's not like you'd say, oh, you have to be, you know, totally off the charts populist to do this. It was just kind of a linear thing. I mean, if you were sort of populist, you would sort of harm your institutions. And if you were really populist, you would really harm them. And, you know, we thought that made sense. I mean, again, populism is this argument about why we represent the one true will of the people and why the other side is so evil, we've got to exclude them from politics uh, in order to, to save people. And so it's, it's, it becomes a justification for taking away um, minority rights and, and you know, constraining civil liberties. It justifies uh, harming the quality of your elections because after all, elections are just about expressing the popular will. It's not about competition, really. And why we might think about concentrating uh, powers in the hands of a strong leader who we believe embodies that will. Um, so, and these are, these are consequences that scholars of populism have talked about for a long time and have already been looked at in some other contexts. It was, uh, it was nice to be able to do that here though with a larger data set, uh, it covered a lot more countries than we've been able to do before. And to think also, I mean, you know, the U.S. in comparative perspective to say, oh, well, okay, what does this mean for us? What will the United States look like in a couple more years if we continue to have populists in power over multiple terms? Um, you know, we would expect to see uh, some negative consequences here too. Not like a Venezuela. We, we wouldn't expect that, but, but it's, it's not just going to be, yeah, democracy is not going to survive that completely unscathed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, maybe there are signs of this. Uh, I mean, the, the world is, uh, when we're talking right now, the world is not exactly in a good situation with, with COVID-19 uh, um, um, 
well, we just talked right before we talked that 2020 was a was was, was not a fun year uh, so far, and I don't expect it to be much better. And we are already seeing recommendations from President Trump on how to deal with elections, and uh, and quite frankly, it terrifies. <laughs> Us yeah. scholars who are who are uh, who are committed to liberal democracy, his recommendations. Well, uh, I don't know what elections will look like in a few months, but uh, let's hope that they happen, and let's hope that they happen safely, and let's hope uh, that uh, that that uh, that it's that they're going to continue to happen, because yeah. because uh, it's important, and it wasn't always the case when populists took power. Yeah, and I think it's important to highlight, again, in, in a more qualitative way, the shifts that we have seen in the U.S., the uh, challenges to things like press freedom. Uh, I mean, we're all familiar with uh, how uh, Trump and many of his supporters have attacked the mainstream press, uh, you know, fake news as a way to discredit them and uh, essentially to say that the, the news has to make the will of the people look good. And it has to make the 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 evil elite look bad. And if it's not doing that, it's it's bad. That's you're with them is, is the message we get from that. And again, this is really minor in comparison to what we've seen in other countries uh, where that have experienced stronger populists. You know, there they actually have you know censorship laws that are passed. We have governments that take over the private media and essentially drive it out of the market. Um, so. So it is, yeah, it, it, things could be much worse, but we do see some of the, you know, the, the, those kinds of things happening, even if they're in, in much less degree. You've mentioned concerns about elections and electoral quality. Again, are these gonna happen? They still seem more like threats or concerns than, than a, a complete reality like we've seen in other countries. You know, Venezuela today doesn't have free elections at all. And, so, uh, so they, these are real concerns. We could also talk about, obviously, the separation of powers, the impact of Trump on uh, the judicial branch. Now, many worry about the courts. I personally worry more about his impact on things like the, the Department of Justice and what's yes. happening there to the quality of their work, to its, its nonpartisan independent quality. And these are, these are real concerns to have, even if, again, much lower uh, threats have been realized here than than in other countries with populists. Yeah, but but Donald Trump has been in power for a lot shorter time than in those other countries as well. So so that's important to keep yeah, in mind. Yeah, you there in Hungary with Viktor Orban, who uh, you know kind of equally populist, but he's been in there a lot longer now. And that's ten years running, and the damage is uh, much. Uh, it's pretty pretty significant, very noticeable. Yeah. yeah. Well. well on that happy note, uh, I think we covered the book, so. I think so too, Levi. Uh, it was a great book. And I, Levi, where should you, where do we go from a book like this? What's next? What do we think we or other scholars should be doing? What would you say? Well, I think, uh, I think if you uh, are in a country that, uh, and you have some concerns about uh, populism, uh, um, maybe taking power, as it was the case in the United States, or, or emerging, then um, well, study these places and definitely study these places comparatively. It's very important to be able to establish a baseline uh, and, and to see what's going on in your country as opposed to other places, because it just gives us more knowledge and more analytical power if we do these things uh, systematically and comparatively. And uh, some of the tools that, well, you have actually developed Kirk, uh, allow us to do this. Yeah. Well, and I, I would add to this, the, uh, this is kind of tough, but to say, well, once populists are in power, uh, you know, like in the U.S. or in other countries where they are more populous or have been there longer, like in uh, maybe Hungary, we have to think about mitigation, right? So how do I respond to that? Um, what's effective? That's, those are questions we have at an institutional or a national or an, even an international level, you know, how how should our country respond to their country that has a populist leader? Um, and for politicians within a country, you know, how do I react to parties over here that are populist and seem to be threatening? Um, but also, again, at the interpersonal level, right? So, you know, if we're around the dinner table, uh, the holiday dinner table with family and the feelings are running high and we were really disagreeing, is there a way to cut through that to, you know, reconcile somewhat? And that work, you know, that work on mitigation is something that we're starting to do, um, and we hope others will do too. 
Yeah, and it's hard. It's really hard to find things. It's it's so much easier to make people more populist or respond to populist messaging. There's been a lot of research on that. And uh, after a while, I, I just got frustrated with it. Like, we don't want to make people more populist. It's not a good thing. So so let's, let's, yeah. let's check the opposite. And it's not an easy research agenda, I have to say. It's uh, There's a lot of frustration along the way because things that have a, have an effect have very small effects and uh, and uh, most things don't have an effect so okay well on that happy uh, note on that happy note uh or at least we're trying i think that that that's the happy note here so on okay. on, on that happy note well thanks girl for doing this and uh, and uh, this was fun okay thanks bye 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 everybody thanks for watching <laughs>